Hi, my name is Matthew LeBlanc, and I am part of the Wartown High School class of 2016. Not only am I a part of the 2016 class, but I also am a part of the Wartown High School Theater Department. For my final AP US History project, I would love to discuss about the history of theater. But first, I'm going to start off with one question. How has the start and growth of theater in America socially and somewhat economically changed our now thriving country? You tell me. Do you ever wonder how theater got to be an actual thing? Well, it all started with the Greeks, specifically in 472 BC. This was the source of the idea of protagonist, which is the good guy in stories and plays, and antagonist, which is the bad guy or enemy in stories and plays. The longest living play known in the history of the world is The Persians, written by Aeschylus in 472 BC as well. Still known today, this play included traits that were also discovered by the Greeks that are now used in day-to-day -day life within theater. Action and violence, such as sword fights, romance, and comedy were all introduced by the Greeks within their plays that they produced. Moving on to the Romans, they based their plays on religion, along the way discovering other genres such as mystery and more ways of violence. Now, skipping a couple centuries where theater slowly grew its importance, a man known as Shakespeare made history with the impact he made on theater. Known all around the world, Shakespeare was the main star of theater in England, creating plays such as Romeo and Juliet, Hamlet, Macbeth, and Julius Caesar, all of which are based around the theme Romance and Tragedy. At this moment in time, we move to America, where the start of theater finally begins within the 13 colonies. It all started with Mr. Lewis Hallam. Originating from England, Hallam started his theater career producing and directing plays in his hometown within England. In a place where theater and acting was a completely normal thing, he decided to move from England to Williamsburg, Virginia. Bringing Shakespeare's world-famous plays, him and his company made their first debut performing Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice play. Note, this was the very first appearance of our professional acting company out of all 13 colonies. In 1753, the Hallams expanded their theater company and built the very first theater in New York City. As they expanded their theater company, they also received some form of hatred from the public, where they believed that the action of theater were instruments of the devil. This became frequent feedback at the beginning of theater in America, but later on society warmed up to it and it became a sparkling form of art in growing America. When Hallam died, his wife took over the theater company. Remarrying to David Douglas, they both further expanded the arts industry. Now given a formal name as the American Company, Douglas and Lady Hallam opened up multiple theaters in Philadelphia. They made their debut with the first professional production of a play called The Prince of Parthia. Hallam's daughter and son, Isabella and Louis Hallam Jr., both were well-known actors in England and starred as the leading male and female in this play. Without this specific moment in history, Without this one single idea from one man passionate enough about theater to pursue a career and devote his life to it, then theater would never truly be as powerful as it is today. No one really knows about how theater came to America, so I hope you found this part of my presentation a little bit interesting, and if you didn't, then cry about it. Economically based, America thrived with money coming in from theater companies ever since Hallam started the cycle. One way of bringing money in is the fact that people from all around the world, tourists, come in and see these performances. In theater companies such as Broadway, Off-Broadway, and even the Metropolitan Opera, all bring in a swarm of people from different countries to see the same show. This also brings in money from surrounding businesses, such as restaurants, hotels, bars, and more. The tourists have to find somewhere to eat, drink, and sleep, right? As you can see in playbills, other businesses within the area put in an advertisement in the theater's playbill to advertise their company. This not only brings in money for the theater company, but for the business being advertised as well. People love to see theater strive, especially since it gets bashed upon ever so often. 
One way of showing their support and appreciation for theater would be donating money to the theater company. By donating this money, you receive special privileges within shops associated with the company, shows, seating, and more. This obviously gives the theater company more money, allowing them to grow and expand, becoming a more illuminating production-making arts industry. Today, theater being a large part of the United States, theaters being spread all around the country, it has made a very important impact on society. Something known as drama therapy erupted in the late 1970s, a program that is, quote-unquote, an active, experiential approach to facilitating change. Drama therapy uses the strategies of acting out feelings held deep within someone's conscious to gain some form of relief without a down spiral of effects by doing so. Studies have shown that kids who suffer from depression then involve themselves in drama therapy or any recreational form of theater become more comfortable in their own skin. Jennifer Nelson, an actress and later appointed as an artistic director, was interviewed in 1972, stating, In the act of creating, they discover again the grandeur of the human spirit, so when they go back to real life, there is an immense carryover. Not only having a strong impact on teen and young adult population, but the actions of speaking out and verbally expressing your feelings, whether fictional or not, can have an even stronger impact on someone of any age. Studies have also shown that the action of verbal expression, theater, is a very well-known stress reliever. It is known to improve happiness and life satisfaction, as well as creativity. Comparing animal interaction to human interaction within a book called Representations of Working in Arts Education, Stories of Learning and Teaching. Authors Bergen, Conalon, and Johansson said that they know that the organism responds with change in the humoral nervous system. For example, verbal expression of traumatic experiences through writing or talking improves physical health, enhances immune function, and is associated with fewer medical visits. Now, taking out any theater aspect of this, it is proven that you are overall healthier when you are more verbally expressive and outgoing. In order to be successful in any theater in this world, those two traits are one of the most important. Socially, you can even say that theater makes people live longer lives, healthy, and more importantly, happy. Now, the most important aspect of this project is the fact that I know exactly what I'm talking about. I may not have been doing theater for years and years, but for a little over two years that I have been doing it, I have never been more passionate about something in my entire life. I've gone and seen a Broadway show. I've seen an opera at the Metropolitan Opera, both of which happen to be with Josh. And... I've seen this economic shine in the, all these companies, as well as in the area. Something's more expensive than my life, which is pretty expensive. And, you know, like, not even that, but I've witnessed all this social diversity in these companies where people from all around the world come to see this exact same performance with the same passion for something so influential to so many lives. And not even that, but I'm part of this social community where I'm insanely outgoing, insanely obnoxious, which you can see right now, and overall just insane. But the fact is, I'm insanely happy. And after losing a few more pounds here and there, I'll be insanely healthy too. Never underestimate the power of something that started off so small. And never underestimate the impact something could make on just one single person. Because 262 years later, the power and impact is larger than you can predict and even larger than you can imagine. Thank you.